Hey Dan, how you doing? Hey, doing good, doing good. Uh, better weather than Nam, bizarrely, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Nicer than we California. Lo we love Superbooth, yeah. So, um, back again, uh, what are you showing us today? So, today we have two new modules in our new low-cost uh, module line, which are also available as DIY kits. We have the looping delay, which uh, is 175 US is the kit. And we have the sampler, which is 199 US is the kit. And the built versions are $100 more. So 275 and 299. So the, uh, these, are, these are the first two in our new uh, series of low cost modules, like I said. And um, if you're not the kit kind of person, you can just buy them pre built, just like normal modules. The kits are pretty easy to build. Um, so let me just dive into the module. So the sampler uh, is a sample playback and recording device. It's dead simple interface. You just uh, push the button and it, and it plays the sample. You have pitch control also. And you also can um, uh, change the length of, of it when it plays. So, or the whole thing. So, a lot of the samples are, uh, are if you loop, if you hold down this button, to, it'll loop. And then, um, as I was saying, a lot of the samples are actually uh, 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 loops, so they, uh, they're, they're beat synced if you, if you just loop it. So you can also change the start position. So, And um, one interesting thing to do with changing the start position is kind of a granular type patch. So if I set a really short length, and then I modulate the start position, I'm sorry, start position, you can actually like sweep through the sample. I'll turn it to a uh, vocal patch. So you can hear that I can change the, the speed of playback without changing the pitch. I can change the pitch without changing the speed. You can also play backwards. So just like a, a very rudimentary granular. So you could sample into it, right? What's that? You could sample into it. Yeah, so you can also record if you hold down these two buttons, then you go into record mode, and then it has stereo input, stereo outputs, so you can record your own samples. Um, the way that the banks are arranged, on the SD card you just put a, uh, you make a folder of up to 10 samples and that'll be a bank. And if you give that folder a color name, like red, white, blue, then it'll, the light will show that color when you go to that bank. Oh, right, nice. so, so it's pretty pretty simple interface. The SD card that's included contains a few hundred samples. It's the same as the one included with the uh, stereo trigger sampler. Oh, that's neat. Right, so um, it's got like a micro SD card back there somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we include enough samples for you to start having fun right away, but of course you're encouraged to record your own and make your own sample packs and whatnot, or use your sample packs you're already using something else. Oh, another feature, speaking of using your own sample packs, is the start position, this is new, um, will quantize, it'll snap to markers. If you have a WAV file with cue points or markers in it, you'll snap to that. Um, so, you can, ah. so you can chop up and you know, Reaper is one program that's used, or um, you, can, you can set sub loops within your loops, or you can set uh, you know, different drum sounds within one sample and snap to them. And, so, and what's, what's the, RAM, the playback RAM for? Because obviously the disk, spe the disk space would be fairly you know, as much as as much as you can put on there. But what? How big a sub? How long a sample can it hold in RAM? Oh, uh, it can. So it it can play up to four gigabyte samples, um, which is the maximum size of of a, of a of a WAV file sample. So it has a big enough buffer that it can load continuously. Um, there, it's very low latency. It's under a millisecond. Uh, the very first time you load a bank, there's a slight amount of latency. But once the bank's loaded, it's it's very very quick, very clean. Nice. Yeah. So um, the it also has a CV for bank, which a serial uh, sa trigger sampler doesn't doesn't have. So you can just do crazy stuff like CV through all the banks. Um, and then of course you have 
sit, you have sit, sit, end sit, out, sit, reverse, sit, so you can sit, do sit, kind sit, of do ping pong sit, forward, sit, ping pong forward, backwards sit, type sit, effects and play record. And the pitch knob is one volt per octave uh, calibrated and you can recalibrate to your own device too. So you can use it with a keyboard or a DAW or, or sequencer or something like that. So the sampler also works really well with the looping delay, which is why we're coming out with them both at the same time. I will show that. This is, um, if I go out from the sampler into that, and then, so this, uh, the looping delay is a clock-based delay. So the timing of your echoes or the looping um, is based on a clock. You can tap a clock in here, or you could uh, feed an external clock. Uh, it's very, very stable clock that's in here. So now I'm going to use this to trigger the clock out, which is this light, to trigger the uh, sample playback. Let's see what I get here. Maybe if I turn it up a little bit. There we go. So you can hear the echoes. So if I turn feedback up. So that's like eighth note echoes. And of course, feedback goes really high. If you want, it goes 110%. And if I change the, uh, the timing, I can do like triplets and all different divisions of that um, main clock. So, and you can do a really cool, if you do like a, if I slow this down, I'm gonna trigger it with a different thing here. Um, you could do like kind of car, oh, you can't kind of, you can do car plus strong uh, type effects here if you get the, sorry, let me go really fast. You just tap a pretty fast tempo in there and then you get feedback up. Now, to really, to really dial it in, you want to hold down infinite hold and turn time Ooh, like nice. that. So you can do a continuous mode. And the cool thing is, is that, that uh, so it's a car plus strong uh, waveguide algorithm. So that is a, the time jack switches it one volt per octave calibrated. So you got tuned. You can tune it and you can play it or sequence it, the notes. And that's different than sequencing the sample pitch because you're actually sequencing the feedback loop pitch. So, oh, nice. so yeah. it's real, real simple. You just hold down one knob and turn this, hold that one button and turn this knob. And then that becomes, and then when you turn it again, it, it switches back into normal quantized mode, which still feedback, if you have feedback high. So you can do really short loops like that. You can also do really long loops, of course, too, um, which is great for sound on sound type stuff. So to show that, I'm going to use the loop clock out, which is, I just set it to equal. So now I have eight, I have a eight bar loop. So my clock, um, let's see, actually I want to do, I'm going to trigger this on the, on the one, every bar, and I have an eight bar loop. And then I'm going to use the loop clock to reset my LFO. And then so that it's not just uh, not just the same note over and over, I'm going to use an LFO that to uh, CV the sample. So I could play different. These are kalimba samples here. So let's hear how this loop loop ends up sounding. OK. So if I turn feedback to 100%, it's going to um, keep layering on top of each other. And then actually, one thing I'm going to do is that clock out. I'm going to put a little trigger delay on it by using the um, on VCA. So now I can add a little uh, syncopation there. So I can put that layer on, and when I like it, I'm going to hit hold again to, to save that in memory. So now I have my dry wet. Here's my dry. Here's my, here's my loop. Let's go to another bank. Maybe I'll lay this down. OK. That's cool. Put a little more of that. So I'm just laying down loops as it's recording. Whenever infinite holds off, it's laying down some more onto this tape. Um, and then when I hit infinite hold on, it just starts looping around on the tape. And then uh, I'll do another little bit more. One more layer. These are kind of a rich. Okay, that's nice. I'm gonna bring that back a little with the delay feed. So I'll put down some of this. Some little piano things. Save that. Uh, a little more. Oh, that's funny. 
I'm gonna bring that way back. But I'm gonna do this one in backwards. So I'm gonna reverse it. Okay. <laughs> and hold that and reverse it back again. So let's hear what we've made. We just made a little loop. And you can hear it. That's just a simple random kind of throwing some random samples down. But let me show you what's interesting. Now this loop is saved in. If I change the timing of the loop, it doesn't alter the pitch or anything. So I can just go to one bar or two, two bars. You know, or back to eight. So you can change the timing of the loop without changing the pitch or anything or without losing any information. Ah, nice. You can also like go sweep back in time. You can window, you can shrink the window of your loop, but you can also shrink back in time of what you recorded previously, which is a way of like unpeeling the, the layers of the loop. So if I hold down infinite hold and turn this back. So that, see, I took off that piano, or that reverse piano samples I just put down. I can go back again. Now I took off that layer. Oh, wow, now I just have kalimba. Neat. And then you, I didn't un delete anything, I can go right back. So if I hold down and turn feedback the other way, see, there's all back again, that too. So you can change your loops and add, you know, I could pull off and add something and then go back and then like widen it. So now I have 16 bars of what's just that. You can go nuts with it and it really use it as a, the maximum loop time is um, uh, 87 seconds. So if you run it in stereo mode, which um, I didn't mention the last time I did this, but the re send return, the send return feature, um, it, you can disable that and use it as uh, left and right in and left and right out. Uh, so you okay. can do stereo, stereo delay. Uh, where the channels are both synced, but it has a stereo path, and that's so when you do that, you get 43 seconds of delay time. And then, if you bought the sampler module as well, you could just sample the whole thing back into the sampler. You can module. just record, yeah, exactly, yeah. So they, these two work really well together. They're really fun. You can see there's just two simple modules and one modulation storage. You could go, you can go nuts. Fantastic. Um, are, th are these available now? It's available next month. Yeah, okay. yeah. Nice. So really soon, um, and yeah, like we say, we're trying to keep this as like a new affordable line of modules. So we're trying to keep the, and if you're a DIY person, then you can also save a bunch and build your own modules. And what was the price of those again? 175 and 199 for the DIY kits. So that's 175 for the looping delay and 199 for the sampler for the DIY kit. And then the built versions are $100 more. Right. So 275, 299. Dan, thank you very much. Thanks.